It's important for families to recognize that drowning is probably the second leading cause of injury-related death in this country. Uh, it, the most common groups are very young children, so toddlers who are mobile but not at all safe around the water, or uh, then later adolescents who engage in a different set of risk behaviors. For young children or children who are not confident swimmers, you need to be within arm's length supervision. That means you can reach out and grab the kid. Don't rely on water wings or other pool toys to keep kids afloat. Now, I would encourage families to do this as a, an official handoff, saying like, okay, I'm gonna watch the kids for the next 10 minutes. Uh, you, can go, you can go get a barbecue, but uh, somebody needs to really be doing that. And, and uh, cell phones are not compatible with um, a lack of distraction. And it's important to remember that the kids don't don't drown the way people think they drown in movies, you know, where there's a lot of splashing, waving hands and calling for help. They just disappear under the water. And uh, it happens very quickly and it happens very quietly. And so if someone is not paying attention to where are all the kids and where are the kids that I can't see, um, it's, it can be tragic. More of our drownings here are um, in open water environments, so on lakes and in rivers and in the Puget Sound. We recommend in all situations that uh, kids who are engaging in water activities wear a personal flotation device or a life vest. Um, and families need to remember those are required uh, for kids on any sort of a watercraft, including paddle boards. In the same way that parents can set expectations around behavior in cars, like everybody wears a seatbelt in the car, parents can do the same for uh, the use of life vests. Starting with modeling that behavior by wearing it themselves, because parents uh, should also use life vests in all of those situations.